Chapter 137 Harold was fast, but Alex was faster. He avoided the grab and in a swift action, he clasped Harold's wrist, shook it slightly, and sneered. What? Is the injury on your hand healed? Pain is forgotten where gain follows ha. Huh? Harold suddenly felt an enormous force surging into his body. He took two steps backward, feeling furious and shocked at the same time. This loser's strength was quite powerful. Knowing that he was out of Alex's league, Harold growled coldly, Damn it, you wait here, I'll get the manager and kick you out. Then, Harold turned his head and shouted for the manager to come. Soon, a middle-aged man in a suit and leather shoes walked quickly, with two security guards tagging along. The man managed a diplomatic smile on his face and said to Harold respectfully, Yes, Mr. Richard, how can I help you? Manager, check their invitation. Harold pointed disdainfully at Alex. I suspect that theirs are fake. For privacy and security reasons, the guest's name was not stated on the invitation card. Instead, it displayed a string of exclusive passwords. By using a specific app on the phone to scan the password, it would display the name of the attendees. Judging from Harold's luxurious suit, the manager knew that he was from a prominent family, whereas Alex was dressed in mediocre clothes. His lips curled into a sheepish smirk and said to Alex, Sir, please show me your invitation card and I'll check it. He donned a polite and diplomatic tone but there was a trace of contempt in his eyes. As the old saying went, don't judge the book by its cover, but the manager did. From Alex's ordinary attire, the manager assumed that he didn't look like the distinguished guest who could walk into the money house. Alex was furious and annoyed by the contemptuous look in the manager's eyes, and he said coldly, what if I don't want to? The manager cleared his throat, restored his professional gaze, and asked, may I know which family are you from? Before Alex could speak, Harold blurted rudely, he is from our Richard family. Oh no, my mistake, he is a live-in son-in-law of the Richard family. I can't say that he is a member of our family, he's more like a dog. The term live-in son-in-law was enough for the manager to make all kinds of speculations. How could a person with an honorable status become a live-in son-in-law? The manager donned a gloomy look and said, tell me, how did you get in here? Alex had lost all the patience when he faced the scrutiny from these people. He was also utterly disappointed at Money House's attitude of dividing their guests into different classes. He said coldly, I walked in here, of course. Knowing Alex's lowly status, the manager stopped probing him further, instead, he said, if you don't follow the rules and hand me the invitation card for verification, then I have to ask you to leave. Then. He gestured with his hand and the two security guards stepped forward and watched Alex like eagles watching their prey. Trump was a little panicked by the scene. He tugged Alex's shirt and said nervously, thinking that their invitation cards were fraudulent, Alex, I think we better stay out of trouble, let's go back. Alex frowned in confusion. Dad, you don't want to watch the auction anymore? Trump shook his head profusely. No, we shouldn't come in the first place. If we are kicked out of here later, it will be so embarrassing. Since his father-in-law had already decided, Alex nodded and walked out together. It was just an auction, what was so great about it anyway? If his father-in-law didn't want to stay, he had no reason to stay either to suffer the insults by these people. As for Faria Adair, if she asked him about it, he would just say that the Adair family's event was too prestigious to have him there. He turned and left with Trump. Behind them, Harold laughed slyly, ha ha ha, deadbeat losers, you're scared now, ha? Huh? How dare you sneak into the Adair family's auction sales? Losers! Alex ignored his taunt and walked towards the door.